Very good morning and a happy Sabbath to uh, all of you. You know, it has been, uh, what, 19 months since the last time I stepped into this church. And time has gone by so very, very rapidly. And today I come to this church and it appeared to be somewhat very, very different. Half of your faces are covered, and some of you even more, because you stretch whatever that's something that is in front of your face, right up to your almost the bottom of your eyes. You know, I'm very glad to see that so many uh, this morning have uh, joined the church and baptized um, uh, into the uh, kingdom of God. You know, it is um, uh, something that is to be celebrated, and we know that the whole of heaven rejoice when souls are safe in the kingdom of God. Now I want to uh, share something before I go into uh, the sermon. I remember that when I was a young 19-year-old, while I was having a Bible study, I was like one of you five that uh, were baptized this morning or uh, joined the church by uh, profession of faith. And uh, during the last Bible study with the then pastor, uh, Dayton Chong. And I have decided that, yes, indeed, you know, Pastor Dayton Chong had shown me all the truth, right, from the Bible. And so I agreed to be baptized. But that's one thing that I told him. You know, when you are 19 years old, when you are new, you have some doubt, always some doubt, right? And you don't know whether, you know, the church is actually teaching the truth. And I told him this, you know, if I find that the church do not teach according to the Bible, I will leave the church. But, you know, after 40 some years, I'm still around. So what I'm trying to tell you is this, that uh, new members, you know, you need to uh, dig deep into the Bible yourself. Right? It is only by studying the Bible yourself that your faith will be founded on solid ground. Right? Your faith will be founded on the rock. Ignore all the noises you know, that might come, right? From your friends, from your neighbors, whatever. Whatever doubts that you have, the Bible will give you the answer. All right? Okay, now this past one week, you know, we have been focusing on the uh, week of prayer, and the uh, topic that I have been focused on is the three angels' uh, messages. All right, and you see that the title of uh, my sermon this morning is Loud Voice, the Three Angels' um, Messages. Now, before I go into uh, the topic, I would like to have you turn your Bible to the book of Matthew. Now, there are a number of references that I would like to uh, have you uh, turn to. And so get your tablet, your Bible tablet, your uh, Bible ready so that uh, you could uh, follow. If you can't follow, that's fine. You can write down and scribble the Bible text uh, um, down somewhere and can go home and uh, retrace what I'm going to share with you this morning. Now, is it okay if I remove my mask? Right? I want to warn you, I uh, work in a clinic and I want to be a super spreader. Now, you are thinking twice already, right? Now, I'm just joking, okay? All right, I think I want to put it somewhere, okay. All right. Now, at the Mount of Olives, when the disciples and Jesus were together, and the disciples asked Jesus a very important question. And you turn your Bible, the book of Matthew chapter 24, all right, and... Um, Let's start with verse 3, right? Verse 3 and 4. And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And immediately Jesus answered, Take heed that no man deceive you. Now, take heed, what, does, what do you mean by take heed? Take heed means beware, be alert, be watchful. Because in the world in which we are living in today, there is huge, huge deception. 
And so as you all know, you know, oftentimes we receive texts and videos and messages, and we have a hard time uh, differentiating between what is truth and what is error, right? And then uh, we unknowingly pass on this so-called fake news which appeared to be real. And you can see, you know, how pervasive, you know, deception, deceitfulness is so prevalent uh, in our world uh, today. And no wonder, you know, in the spiritual realm, you know, Jesus responded and said, the first thing, take heed that no man deceive you. And so Jesus, you know, went on and uh, mentioned other uh, signs and wars and rumors of wars, pestilences, uh, earthquakes in diverse places, in many places. And then in verse 11, right, you drop down to verse 11, and many false prophets shall rise and shall receive a few to deceive many. Many will be deceived and tricked into falsehood. And then you go to verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Now, why is it that Jesus connects the gospel with the time of the end? Now, this is, this is the, uh, this, these are the words from Jesus himself. Now, what is the gospel? Now, oftentimes, you know, when we are asked, what is the gospel? We almost give a uh, standard cliche uh, answer, right, or response. It's a good news. But let me ask you, what is so good about this good news? What is so good? Did the Bible... Uh, describe the gospel as good news? Or it is a human common language? Well, I want you to turn to the book of uh, Romans, chapter 10, and, uh, and it will give an answer, an answer you know, and uh, let's see if it is from the, uh, the Bible that the gospel is known as good news, all right? The book of uh, Romans, chapter 10, verse 15. And it says, And how shall they preach, except they be sent, as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Yes, it is good news. But... You know, why is it that uh, it is called uh, good news? Something bad must have happened, right? For the gospel to be described as good news, that means something bad must have happened. And what is that bad thing that has happened? Mankind has fallen into sin. And therefore, is alienated, separated from God. For the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The gospel is about God's mercy it's about God's grace that we sinners may have salvation. And this is the good news of the gospel. You know, when Jesus connects this gospel to the time of the end, you know, he will tell us, and, he, and Jesus is directing us to another book in the Bible. He tells us about the gospel and he connects it to the end of the, uh, uh, to the time of the end. And let me ask you, what is the book that deals with the time of the end? Which book? It's the book of 
Revelation, the prophetic book of Revelation. And certainly, you know, if Jesus Christ were to refer the gospel to the end time and to the book of Revelation, certainly, you know, there must be something about the gospel, is it not? All right, let's turn to uh, the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 14. All right. And uh, I will not uh, go through these passages word for word because it has been uh, read and I think uh, we should not uh, uh, repeat it and you can go home and uh, read it for yourself. John was in vision and he saw these three angels flying in the midst of heaven with the speed of lightning and we are told with a soft voice no with a loud strong voice now how does it impress you that when somebody barge into your office at lightning speed quote unquote and tell you exactly with a loud voice what how, how does that impress you Is it something urgent? Is it something important? Is it something crucial? Yes. You know, this picture, this vision of the three angels streaking in the spirit of light across heaven and with a loud voice impressed upon each one of us that these messages for the last days are important, it is urgent, and it is crucial. And uh, let's take a look and see what the first angel declared. And I saw an angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation, kindred, and tongue, and people. Now, this gospel is intended for some people, some, for some region of the world. No, it is for every one every inhabitant in this world. And this gospel is known as the everlasting gospel. Now, why is it called everlasting? I can think of two reasons. One is, when man fell into sin, we are told back in Genesis that Adam fell into sin, and from then on, God began to reveal in a progress, progressive manner, the plan of salvation. And in essence, the plan of salvation is the gospel. So it is not something new, even though we call the, the second half of our Bible as a New Testament. But in actuality, the Old Testament is still based on the same thing. It is based on God's grace, it is based on God's mercy, right? It is similarly based on the basis of the new covenant the gospel that we know of is nothing new it has been you know uh, before and the second reason is this that uh, it is known as everlasting because the gospel is a platform a solid ground with which we all can stand on and why we can stand on this solid uh, platform because it is supported by God's love. We are told in the Bible that God is love. You know, God is love. And this platform is supported by God's character, which is love. And because this is love, he, it is not his desire to see anyone to be lost. And that's the nature of God's love. And this everlasting gospel is founded upon this solid uh, ground, foundation of God's love, which is essentially God's nature, God's character. And uh, this angel went on and said, Fear God. Now, many people uh, have a misunderstanding about the word fear. Fear God. 
Now, it is not the, 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 the fear that we all know of, you know, that we experience, we are afraid, you know, of something, you know. The first angel is not asking us to be fearful, to be afraid of God, but rather to give Him deep reverence, deep respect, and adoration. Now, let's go to the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 8, I think. Um, Proverbs chapter 8. And see uh, what uh, this uh, fear of God is. All right? Okay. The book of Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. And in some version, it says to fear, so on and so forth. So which means to say that, you know, to fear God means what? The opposite of all these that has been mentioned, and that is to love uh, righteousness. And the, the first angel went on to um, say, Fear God and uh, the hour of His judgment is come. Now, no, the judgment is very much an essential part of the gospel, gospel message. You know, many of us feel very uncomfortable and you find that this is very seldom uh, taught or, or, or mentioned or preached you know, from the pulpit. But the judgment uh, is essentially part of the gospel. Now, essentially, what is judgment? Well, I'd like to have you turn back to um, um, the book of um, Ecclesiastes, all right? Okay, the book of Ecclesiastes. It is right after the book of uh, Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 13 and uh, 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into a, a, a judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And then, finally, the first angel's message is a call to worship, to worship the only true God of heaven, who is our creator. And then, you know, John saw another angel flying with a message, and uh, it, it declared, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now, Babylon rep represents symbolically a uh, false religion. All right? Now, oftentimes, you know, we uh, refer Babylon as an institution um, or a false religion that teaches perverted uh, gospel. But I think you know, we should also include in a wider scope that in, in, it also involves and include many other false religions. And uh, when we go to chapter 18, the book of Revelation chapter 18, we get an expanded description you know, um, more information about uh, chapter uh, 14, um, verse 8. All right? And it says, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen. Is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the hole of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, 
and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of my people. So the second angel's message is a call out, a call out from all kinds of false worship. And then a message from the third angel uh, followed, which talks about the warning of worshipping the beast and his image and receiving his mark on his forehead and um, the sobering warning that those who refuse to come out of this call out of Babylon, they will suffer the consequences. And the third angel's message is a solemn and a sobering warning to the inhabitants of this world. It is a message that carries a, um, either a, a life or death uh, a decision. The inhabitants of this world have to respond to this threefold message from heaven. And we have to exercise a choice whether to worship the God of heaven who is a creator or otherwise. Now the next question that I want to ask is this, why is it that it's so crucial that Jesus Christ talks about the everlasting gospel and that uh, the three angels messages in the time of the end? Why? Well, if you remember what we have just read in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, the three angels' messages is to protect us from the evil and deceptive influences of the world. Now, who are behind the deception of the world? Well, let's turn to uh, Revelation chapter 13. Now, Re Revelation chapter 13 revealed to us who are the entities that are responsible for the deception in the world. The deception basically is to call and to influence the inhabitants of this world to worship false gods. The people of this world will be influenced by these powerful entities and their sole aim and, 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 and objective is to lead the people of this world into false worship. You know, in uh, chapter 13, uh, for the sake of time, I would not uh, read it, but there are two beasts that arises in Revelation 13. That's a beast that arises from the sea, right? Now, this sea beast is the same as the little horn power in the book of Daniel chapter 7. They are the same entity, the same uh, um, institu institution, right? That set forth to deceive the world. And there are certain, now I will not tell you exactly who is this entity, because I do not want to uh, astonish you, take you by surprise, and uh, you'll be puzzled. If you are interested in the identity of this sea beast, the beast that arises from the sea, I will encourage you to see the elders of the church or the pastor and have a historical study of the identity of this sea beast. Because then, only then, you will see the progression, the nine or ten identifying marks characteristics of this sea beast. If I were to tell you, now some of you may be offended. You'll be startled. I don't want to do that. Okay? But this uh, beast blasphemes God. Alright? And he speaks great things. 
It's a very boastful uh, 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 power, entity. All right? And um, in verse 7, it says that it was given unto him. You see, his seat, his power and authority is given by the dragon. Right? In uh, verse uh, 2, right? You can read, read about it. All right? And it says that, uh, and power was given uh, him over all kindreds and tongues and nations, and all that dwell upon the earth shall, what? Worship him. You see, the crux of the whole issue is about worship. Worship, worship, worship. True worship versus false worship. And that is this contention that is going on in this great controversy. That is still ongoing. And the Bible is given to us to warn us of what is ongoing in our world uh, today. And then in verse 11, there's another entity that's coming out, but this time it's not from the sea, but from the land, right? This beast has two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast, right? And uh, he will influence the world to worship the first beast, right? And he has power to uh, perform miracles. Now, I do not know how uh, this land beast is going to be able to uh, perform miracles. But one thing I do know, that uh, nowadays with modern technology, with 5Gs and uh, drones and all that, you can create words and pictures beautiful up in the sky. Have you seen those? You know, those videos that come out from China? Wow, you know, it's just wonderful what uh, uh, technology can do. But I think these miracles that um, Revelation 13 talks about could be so real and much better than what we see that's put up by modern technology. That it can be so very convincing that some of us may be moved and be deceived. But nonetheless, you know, the Bible has forewarned us to watch out. And then in verse 15, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So this tripartite three-party um, um, union, the sole purpose is to force the world, to influence the world. If that is not going to uh, do it, they will use force on pains of punishment and death, we will be forced and coerced into worshipping the beast. Now, do you see anywhere in the three angels' messages where God had uh, forces to worship him? No. God is pro-choice. He leave it to us. This is the truth. You decide. So a time will come when you and I would have to decide who you will be worship, will be worshiping. And the choice has to very, be very clear. You know, when we look at the um, Week of Prayer reading uh, booklet, you see on the, on, on the, on the front page, all right? On the front page, there's a picture. Now, what does this picture depict? What, what, what do you see on the picture? Now, do you all uh, have a copy of, uh, whether it's digital on your handphone or the real copy of this uh, week of prayer uh, reading material? What's the picture on the front page of uh, this week of prayer? There's a woman and he is carrying a trumpet, correct? Now, I was wondering, why, why would the author uh, or the artist for this material choose a woman and with a trumpet? What do you think? I thought uh, whoever that designed the, uh, the cover or the booklet is um, very creative. You see, the woman in the Bible represents the church, is it not? 
and whom is supposed to sound the three angels' messages to the world. Is it angels? No, we have to understand that uh, the book of uh, Revelation is very symbolic. Definitely the angel is going to be a part of this effort of bringing the three angels' messages, the everlasting gospel to the world. No, the Greek word for angel is actually messenger. Messenger. Who do you think is going to be the messenger to project and to proclaim these three angels' messages? Who is the church? All of us. It's you and me. We are the people who are called to give these messages. We are the love voice. Yes, the Holy Spirit, angels will come to our aid and help to bring home these very vital, crucial, important messages to the inhabitants of this world. But we are called to speedily, with a loud voice, to project these um, messages. You know, in uh, the book of uh, John, I'm winding down, just in case you're wondering if I'm going to go on and on and on and on. Um, you know, um, let's see what Jesus says. You know, uh, in the book of John, uh, chapter 10, I will read verse 14, 15, and 16. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Now, now this is crucial. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, then also I must, must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and they shall be one fold and one shepherd. Folks, we are the flying angels that is depicted in the vision of John. Right? We are the one that is called to put forth the trumpet sound of the three angels' messages. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, may we be empowered to bring this warning, solemn messages, which is important, urgent, and crucial to the world. May God bless all of us.